So we're going to go ahead on and get started. Couple of housekeeping things. Okay, so we are recording now. Good evening and happy Wednesday evening. My name is Risha Taylor and I am um, a registered dietitian, nutritionist and certified diabetes educator. And I am very, very, very happy, a proud, proud member of SMLAC. Very, very happy to be facilitating tonight's session. So thank you to Candace Soar, Candace Hall for the invitation. My agenda tonight or what I'm hoping will happen, I want to share some information with you. We are going through times that we've never seen before. And just let me stop. If you just joined, you are muted. We are recording this session. And I will definitely, um, you can use the chat function and I will definitely um, leave plenty of time for questions. So be sure to write your questions down or um, like I said, send them in the chat. But my goal desire for this evening is to share some information with you. I work with people every day and I've heard just about um, everything. Some people say they're bored out of their mind and um, they just can't stop eating people. We have a lot of time on our hands because we're at home. Some of us are working from home. We don't have that commute time. Yet not a lot of us have been intentional spending that time. And this is really time when we can tighten up some things as relates to our health, um, physical health, mental health, spiritual health, all of those things are important. Of course, my focus tonight will be on your physical health and your eating patterns around eating. You've heard a lot about um, boosting your immune system. So a portion of my message is going to be about inflammation in your diet. Um, and it works hand in hand with your immune system. And so what we all want to do, and I realize all of us have different um, goals, objectives. Um, a lot of us, I would guess, want to avoid the quarantine 15. We may remember um, the freshman 15 years and years ago, and I don't know many people who want to repeat that. And so we want to um, do whatever we can to avoid that. And not everyone has to lose weight, needs to lose weight, or wants to lose weight, but this, the focus tonight is really on healthy eating. We cannot all do the same thing, but we all can do something. All right. Just making sure we are set. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get started. And I do, I teach classes all of the time, but this is a first for me with this, um, doing this by Zoom. So let's see. And I'm sharing my screen so that you can see where we're going. All right. Sorry. Okay, so the slide that I just went past, it just said healthy eating and have my name. Um, breaking news, breaking news, wearing a mask inside. You may have seen this on Facebook. Um, wearing a mask inside your home is now highly recommended, not so much to prevent COVID-19, but to stop eating. A lot of us find ourselves in that situation. So um, it's true, you are what you eat. The picture on the screen, um, almost self-explanatory on the left, um, you see the pizza, the burgers, the french fries, hot dogs, fried food, and on the right, you see those foods, um, the bright colors, those foods that are gonna give you antioxidants and a lot of the nutrients. So every day, everything you decide to eat, you are making a choice, you are eating either feeding disease or you are fighting it. 
And that is a choice you make every day, every time you decide to eat something. All right, so my objectives, my top five nutrition tips, what I want to talk about tonight is increasing your fruit and vegetable intake, enjoying whole grains more often, eating fewer processed foods, rethinking your drink. The average American drinks about 400 calories a day, and it is, it's been suggested that during this quarantine time, that's doubled. And so that could be an area of concern. And then I want to talk a little bit about how we can practice mindful eating on a daily basis. All right, so I told you my message again, a lot in the uh, media about boosting your immune system. I want to go from a different angle in inflammation because the truth is what things we do for inflammation are the same things we do for immunity. The foods are very, very similar. They're doing the same things. But even after COVID-19, if we have a reprieve, hopefully soon, even after that's over, the message about inflammation is one that's been with us for years and it will continue to be with us. So what is inflammation? Inflammation, um, I'm not going to read it verbatim, but it's an indicator of illness or injury in the body. We have two types of inflammation. We have that acute inflammation. So if you are walking down the street, you fall, you hit your knee, that's acute inflammation. And so you're going to know pretty soon that it hurts. It probably will swell up by morning. That's acute inflammation. So that's not the focus of my message. The focus is on chronic inflammation. And even if you're thinking, man, inflammation doesn't have anything to do with me, all of us, everyone, each and every one of us on the phone, where our lives are impacted somehow by inflammation. So let's look at the definition. It's the long-term response to environmental toxins, and that's anyone who we might be sheltering in place now, but even when you go to make your way to the grocery store, there are toxins in the air. There are fewer toxins right now just because most of us are hopefully sheltering in place, but toxins nonetheless. Is infection. So this could be any type of infection. Poor nutrition. And even when we're on the top of our game, we don't all get in the fruit, vegetables, and nutrients we need on a daily basis. Stress. I'm going to stop and say that again, stress. So stress is something, it can be good or not so great, and it impacts us all. Stress is any change to our norm. So stress could be working from home, stress just because you're not used to doing that. Stress can be um, in my case, between every patient I see, we do a deep cleaning in my office. And so just that there's, a, I'm glad we're doing it. It's very, very necessary, but there's a certain amount of stress that goes along with that. Obesity and aging. So hopefully everyone sees that everyone is impacted. Chronic inflammation is an issue for everyone because everyone is subject to environmental toxins. At some point in time, we get an infection, poor nutrition, that could vary from person to person. We all are subject to stress, some obesity, and again, all of us aging. This can last weeks, months, or years. It occurs when acute inflammation cannot heal and it leads to damaging of cells long-term. So whenever your body's immune system, because we said immunity and inflammation go hand in hand, when your body's immune system cannot maintain balance in the body, we have an issue with chronic inflammation. All right, so chronic inflammation in health. What can, what can it do when we have that chronic inflammation long-term? It can lead to obesity, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, arteriosclerosis and heart disease, cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, 
and Alzheimer's. Um, most of those are self-explanatory. Metabolic syndrome is a group of symptoms. And so if you were to go to the doctor, you may have an elevated waist to hip circumference or your waist circumference for a female is over 35 inches for a male it's over 40 inches um, you may have a high blood pressure you may have a low hdl so hdl is the part of cholesterol i call it your happy cholesterol so perhaps your happy cholesterol is low your blood sugars are high your triglycerides are high the combination of those things, if you have three of them, so say you have, you're carrying more fat around your midsection, your blood pressure may be flirting with being a little high, and um, your HDL, your good cholesterol is low. If you meet any three of those, then you, would, you could be diagnosed with metabolic syndrome. All right, so these are the things, these are the reasons why as much as possible, we want to decrease inflammation. Okay, so I told you that every day, every hour you make a decision to eat something, you're either feeding disease or you're fighting it. And so the nutrients in our food, they do just that. They can either promote inflammation or they can combat it. And so it goes without saying, we do not want to promote or cause more inflammation. We wanna combat it as much as possible. So some anti-inflammatory nutrients, omega-3s, your vitamin Cs, you've heard a lot about, hey, increase your vitamin Cs. People are doing emergency. People are drinking more orange juice than normal. Um, vitamin E, uh, vitamin E can be, uh, you get it in nuts and seeds, you get your vitamin E. Your polyphenols, flavonoids, and lignans. And so these are, um, can be found, or foods that have flavonoids and lignans can be um, dark chocolate, some red wine, some broccoli, um, green tea. And so the combination of those, these are all anti-inflammatory nutrients. So we're gonna talk about foods that combine or contain all of these nutrients that will help you. And then finally, we have prebiotics and probiotics. And so if everyone wasn't muted, I would ask, hey, what, what do you know about prebiotics? What do you know about probiotics? But the short of it is um, probiotics, that's the good, um, your gut health. So that's the good bacteria in your gut, in your stomach. We want more good bacteria than bad bacteria. So a diet that is high in, when we talk about processed foods, a diet that is high in sugar, high in fat, that supports more bad bacteria. But some of the other foods that we're going to try to increase, that's um, supporting more good bacteria. And so probiotics, that is the good bacteria in your gut. Prebiotics um, are a little newer on the scene, but they feed. I, I like to think of it as the fertilizer or the appetizer. They feed the good bacteria. And so there are a lot of foods that you can find prebiotics and probiotics in. If you ever drink kombucha, um, great source of probiotics. Um, soft cheese is a great source of probiotics. Um, sauerkraut, some yogurt. I have all of my little food things here, but you can't um, see them. Um, some yogurt has it miso soup. If you do soft cheese, sauerkraut is a great source of probiotics. In terms of prebiotics, that's going to be in your whole grains, your legumes, your um, sauerkraut is a great source of probiotics. Um, bananas. So a lot of us eat, have a banana all right here. Yeah, this is all my fake food. Um, a lot of us eat bananas. Bananas have um, prebiotics in them. Um, 
asparagus, oatmeal. If you start your day with oatmeal, oatmeal has my oatmeal. Um, some prebiotics, but that's the relationship between prebiotics and probiotics. And so prebiotics feed the, um, the fertilizer for the good bacteria, but probiotics, hot, hot, hot topic um, to look up if you haven't, if you're not familiar with probiotics. All right, so this is a picture. Um, I love the color here. You see the salmon that we talked about, omega-3s. You see the cherry tomatoes. You see the avocado, the healthy fat. You see the peppers. You see the nuts. So in terms of an anti-inflammatory diet, these will be some things that one may include. All right, so get a pen, get a piece of paper. I want you to jot down at least five things from this list that you like. I'm not into you eating anything that you foods that you just do not like. But if there are things on this list, and hopefully there are, that you do like, jot some of them down. Because I put it in the presentation later, but the way that these foods help you combat inflammation is they work together. So I don't want you to look at the list and say, oh, sweet potatoes, I like sweet potatoes, I'll eat sweet potatoes every day. That's not how it works. The, these foods come together, it's the synergistic effect. They come together and together they help you fight inflammation. And again, remember all of our food choices either increase, they're either feeding disease or fighting it. And we wanna put on our boxing gloves and fight, fight, fight. So uh, again, I'm not gonna read everything here. Tomatoes, if you make a salad, you could do it with your spinach. Um, you could top it with some tomatoes. If you like grilled onions, you can cut up some broccoli. Um, your fruit, any of your berries, your strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, all of those are gonna be helpful. Pineapples, pineapples your whole grains, um, lentils and beans. I mean, if you ever take a trip to the farmer's market, they have a whole aisle of different color lentils and beans that you can play and experiment with. Your fatty fish, um, what, what are some types of fatty fish? That would be your salmon, mackerel, trout, tuna, herring, and sardines. Salmon, mackerel, trout, tuna, herring, and sardines would be your fatty fish. Um, did you hear me say catfish? No, you did not. Did you hear me say tilapia? No, you did not. And so not saying you cannot enjoy those, but certainly um, you want to, those aren't foods that are going to have an anti-inflammatory effect and let me just check all right i was just okay looking at some of the comments we're doing some things right we're speaking to some people and All right, and so I do see a message that the sound is going in and out. Can someone just put in the chat whether we're good in terms of the sound? And can you, if you say no, I'm not sure what I will do, but if someone can just let me know that you hear me, okay. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Okay, so um, where did I leave off? Okay, so we we're talking about fatty fish. Um, nuts, your olive oil, flax seeds, and chia seeds. But what I was saying is, I'm not saying that you, there's anything wrong. You can't have tilapia, catfish. I just don't want you to um, be under the impression that those would give you the benefits that come from omega-3. Um, coffee, and so that's going to be black coffee, um, your green tea, um, black tea as well. And I said black coffee because Later on, we're gonna talk about foods that increase inflammation. And so when you have black coffee, that is certainly anti-inflammatory. 
when you have cream and sugar with a little bit of coffee added to it, that increases inflammation. All right, so our, right now we're trying to decrease inflammation. And so that would be black tea. But then again, your green tea, your black tea, once we load it up, if we have more honey, agave, or sugar in the tea, uh, then again, we're increasing um, inflammation on, on some level. Red wine, red wine and dark chocolate, dark chocolate. Um, if you eat just incidentally with dark chocolate, you're going to get those anti-inflammatory effects if it's 70% if it's cocoa and higher. So if it does not say on there what percent of cocoa, most likely it's very, very low. When you get into 60%, 70%, that's when you're going to start. But the higher it goes, the more, what am I looking for, bitter it's going to be. So it's not going to be that um, creamy, I don't want to say creamy like milk chocolate, but dark chocolate that's a lower cocoa percentage is going to be pretty smooth. Um, the higher it gets in percentage wise, you'll notice that there'll be more health benefits, um, but you know, to each his own, you may not enjoy it as much. So just keep that in mind. And then herbs and spices. So this is your garlic. If um, a lot of us are cooking, adding turmeric, I put it in tea, um, thyme, ginger, rosemary. But important to note right here, the benefit comes when you're cooking with these things. So taking a capsule of turmeric, ginger, or rosemary, or even garlic, I'm not saying that it's not helpful, but you are not getting the, you're not making the most of the anti-inflammatory effect. That's going to come when you cook with some of these things as opposed to um, taking it in a mega dose capsule. All right. All right, another picture. I, I love the color. I love the color. Um, and anytime, look at your plates. We're going for a rainbow of colors. If everything on your plate when you eat dinner is all the same color, you know. And so the rainbow, I'm asking all the questions that I would be asking you because you're muted. I can't get my answers. But the rainbow of colors, that kind of ensures that you're getting all the nutrients, a variety, good variety of nutrients that you need. All right, so I mentioned this earlier, but the anti-inflammatory, to get those benefits, it comes by not focusing on one specific food, but rather a variety of foods because they work together to promote health benefits. And so the picture I have here, I see some broccoli in there, I see some chickpeas, some red peppers, um, some herbs sprinkled on top. And so this is a dish where these foods would work together to give you the most bang for your buck in terms of combating inflammation. And again, I just wanna go back because remember, inflammation doesn't mean that your knees are hurting, it certainly can, but we're subject to it with, remember, environmental toxins, stress, and all those things we mentioned initially. Okay, so we talked about, now remember that list, and hopefully the screen was there long enough where you wrote down at least five of those anti-inflammatory foods that you can put into the routine because every day I'm challenging you, be sure every day that you're including at least three things, at least three things from that list. All right, so now we are flipping the script because you saw this earlier, the nutrients in your food can both promote and combat the infl infl inflammatory process. And so when we're talking about inflammation, we've already talked about some things that would decrease inflammation. Now I'm shifting gears to what are we eating? What are we doing that increases inflammation? And again, I'm gonna tie it back because remember that inflammation led to the metabolic syndrome that I talked about, obesity, heart disease, a lot of research with Alzheimer's and 
inflammation. I think rheumatoid arthritis was the other thing that was on the list. So again, that's why this is important. But okay, so pro-inflammatory, things that increase inflammation. Listen, excess calorie intake, okay? Excess calorie intake. What that means is last night you had spaghetti, but instead of having a half a cup of pasta, you had two cups of pasta, all right? So that right now doesn't matter whether it was regular pasta, brown rice pasta, or whole grain pasta. If you had too much or more than your body needed, that may have been excess calorie intake at the time. That also could have been excess carbohydrate intake. And so excess carbohydrate intake could mean, it's not what I have on the screen, but could mean that you sat and ate a whole bowl of fruit. Fruit is very, very good for us, but you might've just had too much of it. But especially when you're doing those things, low in fiber, high sugar foods. So when you have um, donuts, you someone, you didn't go, but someone you knew went to Krispy Kreme and they brought home some donuts and they just happened to be hot and you ate one and it melted in your mouth and it led to another, you ate another. Donuts are not high in fiber. They are high, they are high in sugar and fat. So that would be an example of excess carbohydrate intake. That would also be an example, the Krispy Kreme donuts as high in saturated fats. Years ago, um, Krispy Kreme donuts did have trans fat in each donut, but since that time, they no longer have trans fat. But these are the things that we eat that are high, that promote or increase inflammation in our body. So again, anytime we eat too much, so even those of us who are eating, making healthy food choices, when we eat too much, this is one cup of popcorn. And so this may be a handful or two for people. Three cups is considered a serving. But when we eat a whole bag or a whole bucket, this is a whole grain. Popcorn is a whole grain. But when we load it with, um, when we go to movies and lo load it with butter and salt, that we're making it not as healthy of a choice. And when we eat too much, we could again be leading or lending ourselves to the inflammatory process. Okay, so this is this, I just, I put this here so that we can look at it from on one screen. So things on the left are going to fight. We talked about those berries, your broccoli, the fatty fish, the salmon, trout, herring, sardines, um, tuna, um, your peppers, tomatoes, your herbs and seasonings, your turmeric, your thyme, your ginger, your olive oil. Um, if you can get, if you get olive oil, if you could get it um, cold pressed, extra virgin, that would be even a healthier choice. Um, but herbs, spices, berries, fruit, colorful veggies, healthy fats, those are things that are going to fight inflammation. That is the go side. That is the green side. Go, go, go. Pick three of them and have them daily. Not the same three every day, but challenge yourself, especially during this time when we can be more intentional. We have, we're cooking more, hopefully. We're not eating all of our meals out. So be intentional and include things from this list. On the right-hand side, these are things that are increasing inflammation. These things are leading to those problems we talked earlier, heart disease, obesity, um, cancer, the metabolic syndrome, Alzheimer's, rheumatoid arthritis, hot dogs, and so processed meat. So you may say, hey, I don't eat hot dogs but maybe you make a ham or turkey sandwich each day. That's a processed meat. Um, soda, donuts, hamburgers, cupcakes, um, even your breakfast croissants, your muffins. Um, that looks like a Starbucks, maybe cappuccino or frappuccino, um, your pizza. 
things with saturated fat, those refi refined grains, processed foods, red meat, sugary foods, and drinks. So I'm going to pause, I'm doing a time check, but I'm going to pause for 30 seconds and I want you to think about what you've had to eat today. Just think about what you've had to eat today. If you woke up, if you had breakfast, um, if you're doing intermittent fasting and you didn't have breakfast, you started at lunch, from this morning to now, what have you had? Are those foods that you had today, have they helped you to fight inflammation or have they possibly led or probably caused more inflammation? So I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to think about that. And I'll go back to that if you need to look at that while you, I'm gonna look at the comments. Okay, so yeah, so we all, <laughs> I'm looking at some of the comments and laughing. Um, I see um, lovers of bacon, I see epic fail, but look, we're not responsible for anything. Now, some of these things we knew weren't the best choices, but we're not responsible for anything. We can't do anything about anything that happened before seven o'clock this evening. The challenge is going to be what happens after today. So yeah, we don't have to start today, but starting tomorrow, what happens then? Be intentional, be present. We have time now to be intentional. A lot of us are planning to, do, to shelter in place the next month or two. That's great time to be intentional about your health. And I mean, after 30 days, some of these things become a habit. And I'm gonna show you an app later on, on that you can put on your phone that can help you track how you're getting, how much of these foods that you're getting on a daily basis. All right. Okay, I, I just love this, love this, love this. I say this probably, 10 times a day to people. Nothing tastes as good as being healthy feels. And I know you say that um, cake, cookies, the pizza, your favorite food, I know it tastes really, really good, but nothing tastes as good as being healthy feels. Nothing tastes as good as being healthy feels. And I apologize for the dog in the background and and there are some questions in the chat. I'm going to go back to it as soon as I see the chat button again. Okay. So. Okay, so what about turkey, bacon, cheat day for real? And let's see. Okay, so turkey bacon. So turkey bacon is still processed. So if, if the question is, hey, is it a better choice? It is a better choice, but any way you cut it, it's going to lead to inflammation um, because it is. I mean, it's high in sodium, high in, um, it's, it's going to have some fat. But yes, yeah, so if a person were to do turkey bacon, I, what I would recommend is that, hey, you say maybe two days a week, I'm going to enjoy turkey bacon and I'm going to limit it to one or two slices. But if that is something that a person is enjoying on a daily basis, it most definitely would fall in that category of processed meats. All right. Um, all right, some people are doing some things. Right. Um, why is turmeric? So yeah, so the anti-inflammatory effects, it, you, it, you just can't absorb it as well. You're getting some, you don't absorb it as well. It's when it works together with other foods. So just taking a garlic peel or taking a turmeric peel, I'm not gonna say that it's no benefit, but the benefit comes from cooking and when it's joined together with other foods, that is the best way. And that's how you're going to get the most bang for your buck. 
Um, and so again, not saying that you're not getting any benefit from, but there is the research is very clear taking mega doses of any one thing is never going to be so even if you just put some uh, sprinkled some turmeric over um i don't know whatever you're eating or put it in some tea drinking it and eating it is always going to provide the best um the best source um okay i'm sorry i'm looking for Okay, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to come back on. How do you know when too much is too much? I understand the donut thing, grabbing strawberries. Okay, so I'll just, I'll say that real quick. I have it in the presentation later on. With fruit, the recommendation is two to four servings of fruit a day, but they're separate servings. So two to four separate servings. So eating too much fruit at one time can make blood sugars go from zero to 260. So um, the recommendation is that fruit is great for you. We want you to have it. It's two to four servings a day, but it's very important that those are separate servings. We want to avoid large fluctuations in blood sugars. And that's whether a person has prediabetes, diabetes, or no diabetes. The goal is the blood sugars are gonna go up when you eat and they're going to go back down. The goal is not to have them jumping up and down. So that's why too much of even a good thing like strawberries can be too much. Um, okay, whole grain breads. So yes, yeah, so whole grain breads are going to be anti-inflammatory and so on that list. However, when we look at whole grain bread, I don't want you to just look for brown bread because a lot of brown bread that's on the market or in the supermarket um, is white bread with caramel coloring. And that is not the goal. So it needs to be a rye bread or a whole grain. And your first, and it's not enough, it can say 12 grain on the outside. But if you look at the package at the ingredient list, it needs to say whole wheat flour or um, a whole grain. So if it's anything else, if it's bleached or unbleached or anything else like that, it's not going to be a whole grain. Um, do, 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 do. Um, black seed oil um, is helpful. I don't use it personally. Um, and so, and it's not something that I, recommend the research i do a lot with evidence-based research and the research i don't know anything negative to say about it so i can't say it's harmful um questionable about how helpful it can be and so in that case if i don't if, if we don't if we can't say it's harmful and it may be helpful um you know a person's welcome to try it and kind of see what benefits you get for yourself okay so i'm going to keep moving i'm watching my time okay okay so this is again this is where i'm going with this and so now i want to give you some practical ways that we can do this how can we increase our increase our fruit and vegetables remember i want you to enjoy whole grains more often eat fewer processed foods i want you to rethink your drink and practice mindful eating. So now we're gonna get into some practical ways that we can do this. All right, so in um, fruits and vegetables, just notice the colors on the left hand of the screen. You can't look at that and not know that there, it looks like the nutrients are almost jumping off the page. Um, I don't wanna get into it, but with everything you're hearing on the news about the meat shortages, you have to look at that because what hasn't been publicized as much is that the process by which inspections are done at a lot of these meat plants have been relaxed a great deal, all right? And so because people were sheltering in place and they didn't want as many people in facilities and closer to each other, federal inspectors don't have to go out to certain plants and inspect. They have people who work there, they're doing their own inspections. And I know that there are some very talented, and a lot of times 
people who work at a certain business, they may know more than the inspector walking in off the street, but the inspector is still an unbiased person who is trained to look for certain things. People who work in their, these plants, they have a vested interest and they want to stay working. They want to stay getting the paycheck. They don't want to um, be the whistleblower. And so with so much going on with the meat industry, uh, it can't do anything but good to, I'm not saying everyone needs to go whole food, plant-based 100%, but it can't do anything but help at this point to increase your fruit and vegetable intake. So enjoy at least three servings of fresh frozen or canned vegetables each day. If you're going to go with canned, and it is not a bad idea right now to get some canned, to have something, it's convenient, it's quick, um, but rinse them off. Not one time, not two times, but rinse them off with water three times um, if possible. And then um, buy fruits and veggies that are in season. Visit your local farmer's market. Um, the farmer's market, the cat farmer's market, is open now and it's actually been a very very pleasant experience it's not as crowded as usual so this is a great time to kind of just go around and see the lay of the land we talked about choosing a rainbow of colors and we've i also touched on the eat two to four servings of fruit daily all right and so not going to spend a lot of time here but some of your whole grains i'm going for brown rice um, if you've never had brown rice pasta, uh, again, the Cap Farmer's Market has a whole, um, several different types. They have penne pasta, but they have several types of brown rice pasta, a very smooth tasting pasta um, that you may enjoy. Wild rice is a whole grain, your oatmeal as opposed to cream of wheat or grits, and then a whole grain cornmeal. So if you're trying um, your hands in the kitchen, um, Try some of these ingredients to enjoy your whole grains more often. All right, processed foods. So we've been talking about this the whole time. Look at here and see, A, in the last 24 hours, 48 hours, how many of these things have you enjoyed? Any cake, candy, cookies, deli meat, processed foods, hamburgers, hot dogs, um, and, and so with the hamburgers, a lot of it is the condiments on there. So the cheese is processed. Um, we may add um, mayo, but you can actually get lean, whatever you're using, ground turkey, beef, um, and that would be a healthier choice. But if you're doing ham sandwiches, turkey sandwiches, um, your sandwiches with the works on it, pizza, um, some of these may be with your nuts there. Your nuts can be a good choice, but some of them, if you get them covered in sugar or um, salt, again, not, they're more processed. Your milk chocolate, um, your coleslaw, Doritos, Cheetos, Twinkies, um, processed foods. So just kind of look, these are things that are feeding inflammation. All right, and I'm talking a little fast. I wanna get through this in the next couple of minutes so we, I can open the mics and we can um, answer some questions. But rethink your drink. So we talked about there are a lot of health benefits to coffee, uh, again, with min minimal amounts of sugar and flavored cream, uh, benefits to green tea, a lot of benefits to green tea. You can make it as an iced tea. Um, but make your own, make your own because you control what you put in it. You don't have to sweeten it. It may be an acquired taste, but just try um, different types of green teas, um, maybe squeeze some fruit in there to give it a little bit of flavor. But sodas, even your sports drinks, your fruit drinks, um, even juice. Juice is very, very, very concentrated. And so the recommendation for juice is four ounces. This is, I was looking for my four ounce cup. This is six ounces. And so this is more than the recommendation. The recommendation is four ounces a day, period. And if you're drinking juice, it's best to dilute it with water, but that's not something I would much rather you eat a piece of fruit. You're going to get the benefit of the fiber, etc. But water, 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 water helps you keep balance in your body. Hydration is important for immunity and to decrease 
inflammation, so staying properly hydrated is very, very important. So rethink your drink. Um, alcohol, if you're going to go with alcohol, red wine would be a great choice, but again, a week, too much of a good thing can be too much. All right, and so we will end with um, practice mindful eating. So what is that? It's really about being present and intentional, being deliberate, choosing foods that you enjoy, that are satisfying, but that also nourish your body. Nothing tastes as good as being healthy feels, all right? Minimize distractions. So if you're eating while watching the news, in these days, that can be horrible. There are so many news stories today that just make you anxious um, or eating. Even eating while watching a movie, you're throwing popcorn in your mouth, responding to what you're seeing on the screen. Eliminate some of the distractions. Try not multitasking. Engage your senses. What does that mean? Spend some time, smell the food, taste the food. Think about, hey, can I pick out what flavorings were used, what herbs were used in there? Um, look at it, just engage your senses and just be more present and intentional when it comes to meal time. Your meal should last 20 to 30 minutes. That's how when you la make your meal last 20 to 30 minutes, your brain gets the message that your stomach is full. And then you have to listen to the message and act accordingly. But if we're just eating and throwing food in our mouth, we finish in 10 minutes, you feel like you're still hungry, you go get more, and then you take the risk of just being uncomfortable, just sitting and being uncomfortable because you ate too much. All right, so identify your relationship with food, what triggers? Um, if you get a call, there's so much bad news that we're hearing um, these days. And you're like, oh man, if that sends you to the refrigerator, does being boredom send you to the refrigerator? In our country, we eat when we're happy, mad, glad, sad, stressed, frustrated. If it, there's a wedding, we eat. If there's a funeral, we eat. We eat for all reasons. So know, identify your relationship with food and know what your triggers are and be intentional and present. Go grab something from the anti-inflammatory list so at least you know you're doing something good for your body. Eat to live and don't live to eat. Often, I've heard from a lot of my clients that once they eat breakfast, they're looking for, or thinking about, hey, what's going to be the next meal? Because for some people who are at home, that is the highlight of their day, what they're going to eat. All right. I love this. Um, honey, you is bored. You is not hungry. You is eating too much. All right, so if that resonates with you, just be intentional, be deliberate, and think about what you're doing because everything you eat and every time we eat, we're, we're making a decision to either fight disease or contribute to it. All right, so again, this is the last time you'll see this. These are my five nutrition tips. Increase fruit and vegetable intakes, three servings of vegetables a day, two to four separate servings of fruit. Enjoy whole grains more often, eat fewer processed foods, rethink your drink, and practice mindful eating. Be present and intentional. All right, I told you I was going to give you an app. Um, Dr. Gregor's Daily Dozen, his Daily Dozen is an app that you can download and you can go through your day and as you're eating things, you can mark off what you've had. He wants you to have um, several servings. You can track your water here, your spices, your nuts, your vegetables, what type of vegetables, um, your berries, your beans. Um, and you can look at it every day. This is an app we do. We download all kind of other apps. My Fitness Pal is something. Water Log is something that'll kind of buzz and let you know, hey, it's time to drink more water. Um, so these are just some things. We use apps for everything else. So why not use it to improve your health? All right. And let food be thy medicine. Let food be thy medicine because it can heal us 
it can also harm us um, if we do too much of the wrong thing. All right, and in keeping in social distancing, let's keep up. If you're at home, run into that refrigerator all day long, put a sign up saying, hey, let's keep some social distance, be intentional, plan your meals ahead of time, so that at the end of the day, you just don't find that you allowed your emotions to um, run your day. All right, and then just, sit, I think this it really is the last one. Let's make a pact. When this is over and we see each other's post-quarantine bodies for the first time, let's just ask, hey, have you lost weight? No matter what the situation is, no matter what it looks like, let's just make a pact that it is what it is. All right, questions and answers. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to unmute everyone and then I'm going to read. All right. Okay, so manage participants and I'm going to unmute. But you can mute yourself. I'm going to unmute everyone, but um, if you could mute yourself, um, unless you need to talk, because I hear a lot, I'm already hearing a lot of background. So if you can mute yourself, that'll be great. And then I'm going to the chat. <laughs> all right. You know what? I'm going to go back to mute all. And if you see the hand raise option, maybe that's a better thing but i'm going through the okay so 20 to 30 minutes yeah that's really how long we want our meals to last 20 to 30 minutes because you really do want there'll be a time in your meal where you take a deep um breath and we kind of read that as i'm gonna gear up and go back um to more eating but look i do want to see if i hope everyone saw sonia um sora striders Post that a lot of the inspectors have been diagnosed with. Eating and go for more, um, more vegetables. Okay, so we're starting tomorrow. We talked about um, bacon, oral or liquid supplements. Um, Either one can be, if you're taking a multivitamin, you want to be careful with some of the liquid. A lot of the liquid supplements have, uh, what are they, uh, herbal extracts added to it, and it can interfere with absorption. But if you're just taking a supplement it, to truly just supplement what you don't eat, that's not going to be a problem. But if you are, if you're, if something, if you are deficient in something, you're taking a supplement, you want to make sure it's pure. You want to check the purity of it. One way you can do that is, I'm looking at the time, we have two minutes, but um, one way you can do that is to make sure it carries a USP code on it. That's USP. It stands for United States Pharmacopian. And that they're not saying that, yeah, it's going to grow your hair, skin, and nails. What it's saying is that what you're buying, it's just... Um, and it's guaranteeing the purity and just telling you, hey, if you're trying to buy omega-3, that really is omega-3. Because you just real quick story, years ago, I don't remember if it was 20, 20 or 60 minutes, but there was a um, story on that many, they went into GNC, they went into Kroger, Walmart, all of the Walgreens, all these pharmacies and they pulled supplements off the shelf. They went and tested them, and these supplements that places were charging all this money for, the vitamin shop, when they tested like omega-3, the majority of it, it was like 80% omega-6 and omega-9. Omega-6 is in margarine, so why would you not pay for that? And it had very little omega-3. So if you're doing a lot of supplements and spending a lot of money on that, buy you some fruits and vegetables, eat, get you some fruit and vegetables, um, and increase um, your intake that way. But if you do do, um, if you do buy supplements, 
if it carries a USP or GMP. So GMP stands for Good Manufacturer Practices and USP stands for United States Pharmacopian. And these are just two agencies because supplements are not a regulated industry. So these are two agencies that will go in and if you subscribe to either of these agencies, you're giving them permission to come into your plant at any time, take a supplement right off the line and test it, and they will guarantee its purity. So that will give you some safety where that's concerned. All right, I think I have covered everything and it is eight o'clock on the dot oh i have some new messages um thank you thank you thank you all right so i hope i got everything my name again is risha taylor i'm on the roster you are free to um email me text me um i can get my if you you know have a question you just really want to answer or if i happen to miss it on here i apologize um you are welcome to text me or call me any questions um this is i'm this is my love my passion so thank you thank you thank you for the opportunity i hope that you found something that again we can't all do the same thing but we all 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 can do something starting right now um so thank you thank you thank you for your time thank you for sticking with me and it's 801 so i want to be respectful of your time Stay safe, soars. Um, enjoy this time with family. Connect with family. Call your friends. Um, and stay healthy and move more. We didn't talk about exercise at all tonight. I know we had Zumba the other night, but just make sure in the process um, that we are moving more and being intentional and deliberate about what we put in our mouths. All right. Thank you so much. All right, so figure out.